thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you and I will lead you back to your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. With grateful hearts, remember and turn to the Lord with thanks and praise. Let us pray. Father, for all that is good, keep us faithful in serving you, for to serve you is our everlasting joy. So, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from Paul to Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you have accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord. Now keep on following him. Plant your roots in Christ and let him be the foundation of your life. Be strong in your faith, just as you were taught, and be grateful. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. We were like a grapevine you brought out of Egypt. You cleared the ground and we put our roots deep, spreading over the land. Shade from this vine covered from the mountains. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. See what's happening to this vine. With your own hands, you planted its roots. Lord God, all-powerful, make us strong again. Smile on and smile on us and save us. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in my love, says the Lord. Those who live in me, and I in them, will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, my friends, and welcome to our liturgy. And this is the end of our school year and our liturgy that we celebrate together. You know, I hope and I pray that this coming new school year we will be able to see each other in person and celebrate the liturgies or masses together as one community. My friends, when Jesus was preaching and teaching uh, people, when he was doing his public ministry, he was using all sorts of different signs and symbols and stories. He was using those things to convey something very important, something about his father, something about God's love. For example, he was saying to the people, to what can we compare the kingdom of God? Well, it's like a mustard seed. And so he was using a mustard seed, a little tiny seed, to compare that mustard seed and how that mustard seed grows to a, a huge bush, almost a tree. He was comparing that to the kingdom of God. Or when he was telling people the story about Good Samaritan. How the Good Samaritan was able to help someone. And he was telling people, well, we all have to be like that Good Samaritan. Be able to help others. Be able to go extra mile. My friends, in our gospel today, Jesus shows us and presents us with the image of the vine. He says, I am the vine 
and my Father is the gardener. I am the vine, you are the branches. I guess in our lives we ate grapes, all sorts of different ones, like those that I have here on the table, small and big, red and yellow and dark and black, and those are yummy, those are tasty, very tasty grapes. But you know, in order to have those tasty, yummy, sweet grapes, well, people have to know how to grow them. It has to be enough sun, good soil, enough water, and those grapes, those vines have to be pruned in order so that the branches can bring a good fruit. And so, of course, we also have to be patient. We cannot just plant the grapes, we, we cannot just plant the vine and just wait. No, we have to do something. And of course, Jesus is not telling us how to grow the vine, how to have the grapes. He's using that image to let us know about something else. The same way as the branches are connected to the vine in order to produce a great and wonderful fruit, Jesus wants us to know something very important about our faith. That faith that we have can become stronger and stronger if we are connected to Jesus. He is the only one that offers us that strength. And so being connected with Jesus helps us to grow in faith and wisdom. My friends, how can we be connected to Jesus? There are a variety of different ways. Prayer. Something that is very important, our daily prayer. And you know, Jesus himself taught us how to pray when he was teaching his disciples the Lord's Prayer. Every single day we use that prayer, in the morning or in the evening. When we come to celebrate the Eucharist in the church, we say the Our Father when we say the Rosary. And so prayer is one of those wonderful ways through which we can connect with Jesus. And being connected with Jesus, we can produce a great and wonderful fruit. Obedience to God's commandments. You see, he offered us commandments, not to limit us, but to give us a freedom. When he said, love one another. Love God and love your neighbor the same way as you love yourself. And having that love simply offers us this incredible freedom and that connection with Jesus also brings us closer to our brothers and sisters. Prayer, obedience to God's commandments, but also reading the Bible. When was the last time that you had a Bible in your hands? Try to find at home the Bible open the Bible and maybe read a couple of sentences, a couple of verses, and ask yourself, well, what Jesus wants me to do? What is he telling me through those verses in the scripture? Someone once said that the Bible is this beautiful love letter of God to all of us. And so prayer, God's commandments, and our obedience to God's commandments, and also the scripture, but also participating in the sacraments, the sacrament of the Eucharist, through which Jesus offers us himself, and through the sacrament of reconciliation, when he cleanses us, purifies our souls and our hearts, and makes us strong. I guess we pray today, as we continue this wonderful celebration, that we may bear good fruits. As St. Paul said in his letter to the Colossians, we should root ourselves in Christ, and he becomes the foundation of our lives. And so let me close this reflection with a prayer for all of you and for this time that we will go for our summer holidays. Take time to claim your strength. There are God's gifts for you. Take time to have fun. It is God's way of teaching you your strengths. Take time to grow yourself. 
stay connected to Jesus all the time. Take time to trust yourself. You see, God trusts you. Take time to share with others. They will bless you and you will bless them. Take time to have hope and faith. You are a child of God. Let us put ourselves into the hands of the Lord and pray that God will bless us, our families, during this wonderful months of summer. May we all help make our home a place of relaxation, peace, joy, love, and safety. May we be generous and considerate, not thinking only about ourselves, but also about others, helping others, enjoying these blessings of summertime. Lord God, creator of all things, guide our steps and strengthen our hearts during these months of summer and vacation days. Grant us refreshment of mind and body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy and safe summertime for all of you and your families, for all the teachers and staff of your school, and see you soon. God bless. With confidence in our merciful Lord, we lift up our needs. For Pope Francis, clergy, religious and lay leaders, that they may always be dedicated witnesses of God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may seek peace, not only in word or speech, but also in truth and action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that the vine grower is pruning, that they may persevere in faith and see their fruits increase. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vacationers, that they may see God's handiwork in the splendor of creation and be renewed in spirit by their time of recreation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic education, that our Catholic schools may reveal the glory of God in all that they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For graduates, that they may be open to a lifetime of learning and use their education to make a meaningful contribution to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students who received one or more sacraments during this academic year, that they may continue to respond to the invitation to celebrate Christ's love in the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For staff and students, called to new beginnings elsewhere, that they may continue to live and learn in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all here present, that we may remain rooted in and joined to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the needs of all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O God, who gave us Christ, the true vine, Hear our prayers and let us bear fruit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Let us pray. Lord God, may your sacred word strengthen us in faith and help us to do what you command. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for God's blessing. God of wisdom, we thank you for all the gifts you have given us throughout this school year. We praise you for giving us life, for saving us in Christ, and for choosing us to be your people. As we come to the end of this school year, we voice our gratitude for the good things you have done in us. We praise you for all who have shared 
in the work of this school and the students and all of the students therein. We ask you to bless them in your love and give them refreshment and peace. Fill them with your grace and mercy that they may always shine like the dawning sun and bring glory to your name. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit come down on us and remain with us forever. Amen.